Hello dear friends, I am back and I'm so nervous to be doing this video because Hey, come here honey. I know, I know, but I'm trying to film something right now. You can't pull the cord out. Moonshine. Hi everybody, I'm back and I am here today with something a little different, uh, a lot different. I'm gonna be doing my makeup and uh, talking to you all about all your burning questions that I've gotten on Instagram. I put out a little uh, request for kind of a Q&A type thing, pregnancy or otherwise, and I just kind of wanted to chat. And while I do that, I'm going to put my makeup on, mostly just because I like watching these kind of videos where other people kind of casually do their makeup while they talk. It's just soothing to me. Um, I do need to tell you, I need to tell you, I have no idea how to do my makeup. You're going to learn that really quickly. And I just need to you to know up front that I am uh, not here to tell you that I'm good at it or that I know what I'm doing. In fact, the opposite is true. So please go easy on me. Um, this is just kind of what I do day to day and I'll probably do, be doing everything wrong. But growing up, I just never quite learned how to do my makeup. My mom doesn't really wear much makeup and it just wasn't something that... Um, I mean, I love wearing makeup, don't get me wrong. I wear it pretty regularly, but um, I'm a fraud is what I'm trying to say. So take the whole makeup portion with a grain of salt, a large, large, large grain of salt. And otherwise, I'm just gonna talk to you. So let's get started. Oh, and side note, everything I'm using has been vetted by my OB for, you know, being safe. I really do rarely wear makeup these days. So this is kind of an event, if you will. All right. Let's get started, shall we? And like, uh, again, I feel like a fraud for even saying this, but I'll link everything I'm using down below because um, some of this stuff, like the Il Maquillage, is my absolute favorite uh, new brand and it's cruelty-free. Everything I use is cruelty-free. Um, so I'll put everything down below if you're interested. Uh, but again, please just take it with a grain of salt. I'm an amateur. Okay, <clears throat> now, I feel like I haven't really updated everybody um, on the pregnancy in general. Like I mentioned it on the podcast, both podcasts, um, but it was very fleeting mention. It wasn't like, you know, descriptive update because, you know, neither of my podcasts are, well, they're about me because I'm a Gemini, but I just didn't feel comfortable sharing everything on like a true crime podcast when uh, I have other platforms like this available to me. So just an update for everybody because I feel like most people are kind of out of the loop. Um, I had several miscarriages last year. You guys are probably like, no, we all know that. You talk about it a lot um, and I do and I apologize. But just to give kind of a backstory, I had several miscarriages last year. Um, I made a video about those already, so I'm not going to harp on that uh, this time around. But uh, that being said, it was a kind of a scary journey um, for us. For me getting pregnant um, for a fourth time uh, and so I found out in mid January I think January mid mid to end of January is when I found out about this pregnancy oh my god it's been like almost all of 2021 I haven't had a drink since 2020 <sighs> like look at this look at this packaging it's so cute this is their foundation woke up like this I don't even want to show you what I actually look like when I wake up. Um, and it's, <laughs> they have all these sassy comments like, sorry, I don't speak low maintenance, um, which kind of cracks me up. I do like the one that's on uh, the, pa the, the packaging they mail you. It says more is more. <laughs> I have searched my whole life for a foundation that I really liked that was cruelty free. I used to use, um, I think it was Maybelline dream mousse or some combination of those words uh and i loved it and i had like the exact perfect shade found and everything and then when i realized you know they're not cruelty free and i started looking i tried so many different brands and like on a whim one day um i took the quiz on the il maquillage website and i was like what are the odds that taking some online quiz they're gonna figure out my shade of makeup shade of foundation and they mailed this to me and they do like a tester thing where you can mail it back or you can you know if if it doesn't work for you it works like this is the only thing i use nowadays um it's amazing so this is woke up like this in shade 60 so just a fun fact but i like like full coverage foundation see this is me i'm like already embarrassed that i'm talking as if i know what i'm talking about so after like a roller coaster for both me blaze and both our families um in regards to the pregnancy and the multiple pregnancies i should say 
Um, finding out in January was, while it was exciting, it was also a little bit like, here we go again. Uh, and when I say that, you know, I was, it just, there's an element, I feel like, um, I know a lot of people have experienced loss and I feel like once you do, it sort of taints uh, any future excitement like whereas the first time I got pregnant it was just like holy crap this is real it's happening there's like a part of you that doesn't want to believe it um, because you're scared that you know the same thing is gonna happen all over again <sighs> and so when I found out in January uh, I <laughs> you know in the past I had done all these like big reveals and things like that um, because I'm, you know, a pretty extra person. But for this one, I just kind of, it was low key. I found out in the floor, on the floor of my bathroom <laughs> with Geo. So pretty on brand, I guess. That night I told Blaze and then I immediately FaceTimed my mom. I tried to film it, but I didn't realize at the time that you can't like record audio of FaceTimes. Fun fact, by the way, for, I think it's like some regulation, like some privacy regulation or law. Um, so I told them pretty immediately and it was kind of nice because in the past I've had like high expectations of how I wanted people to react um, and my mom you know she's German <laughs> as you know um, and she's kind of not a very like emotive person um, when it comes to surprises and things like that so um, it was kind of the best way I think for both of us that I just facetimed her and told her and the exciting thing was when I filled out one of those you know find your due date calculators um, the due date was my brother's birthday September 30th and that was just a really exciting and like special moment um, and also I want to add too that there was something about um, this pregnancy that felt different like from day one even though there was that tinge of like anxiety and fear and by tinge I mean you know deluge and waterfall there was also a part of me that was very at peace and I felt kind of like okay this one's different um, and I'm not sure what that was, but I just knew from day one, and even though I had a hard time admitting it, I knew from day one that things were going to be a little bit different with this one, and so far they have. I mean, knock on wood. But anyway, so, you know, that day Blaze got home and said, um, you know, I, I hope it's okay. I told my mom, we, you know, he and his mom are really close, and I'm pretty close with her too, and he was on the phone with her, and he just kind of, you know, blurted it out. She was obviously wondering how we were doing. Um... And at first I was like, no, I wanted to surprise her. But uh, honestly, at that point, I was just glad that people, we had people um, kind of on our side who knew. And so it wasn't like a secret or anything. Plus, there were plenty of people I ended up surprising. So I got my fill of being extra. Okay, so I bought this foundation. And I'm like hoping it's also from Il Maquillage. And it just came in today. And I don't, this is another fun fact about me is I never wear foundation. Like, I don't think I've. Oh, not foundation, I'm sorry, concealer. I don't think I've ever worn concealer before. Like I have tried it, but I just don't know what I'm doing and I I don't really get it. <laughs> so I just like, I'm always in awe. I mean, I don't even know how to open it. Like that's how amateur I am at this. How do you open? Help. 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 <clears throat> that's like taunting me. Look at it. It's like, here I am. You can't have me. You know what, maybe I'm not, just not meant to wear concealer. Maybe that's what the universe is trying to tell me. Concealer is not made for me, okay? 12 seconds later. Okay, I don't tell my mom. I shouldn't be allowed to raise a child. I just used my teeth to open that. Please don't tell my mother. So <clears throat> anyway, we told a couple people and you know, I was just really excited and really nervous. And the longer it went, the you know more real it started to feel. Um, I'm currently 30, no, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm 30 years old. I'm currently 28 weeks pregnant. By the time this comes out, I don't know, maybe I'll be 29, but it's going simultaneously fast and slow at the same time, which is what simultaneously means. Okay, let's see if I can pull this off or at least pretend, pretend like I can pull this off. I don't know, probably not. We'll find out. Also, I tried to like lug a giant mirror up here. <laughs> like, I mean, like a floor length mirror, like a full, and by try, I mean, I literally hauled it up the stairs. And uh, then I was like, what am I doing? This isn't gonna work with the camera. So I'm just using like the actual um, camera thing, <laughs> like from, from the actual camcorder. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, they mailed me this, wait, where is it? They mailed me a concealer brush. 
I don't know, it was like a free gift, I guess, for ordering the, ooh, for ordering the concealer. So that's another fun thing. I feel like this brand is always sending like little gifts and surprises. Also, can they sponsor me? No, they're gonna look at this and be like, wow, she's wrecking our whole brand. Okay, part of the problem is I really can't see my own face in this thing. I'm gonna use that as an excuse when the inevitable comments start coming in about, wow, there's big splotches on your face and stuff. I can't see. So anyway, we told a few people. Um, it started to feel a little more real as it went along. And I was really nervous because with the other pregnancies, I hadn't really felt too many symptoms. And I always took that as a sign that like, the hormones weren't quite kicking in and then the pregnancies always ended. And so I was getting nervous and I wrote in my, I have one of these, Okay, I have three of these. These pregnancy journals where you like fill them in as you go. And I bought three different ones. I just, I have no self-control. So I bought three different ones and um, I was filling them out. And you know, one of them asked like, how has your uh, nausea been, your morning sickness? And I was like, man, I don't feel like I have any morning sickness. Um, that night, that night, I read the words, <laughs> I read the words soy eggnog. More specifically, it said soy nog. And I just ran into the bathroom to hurl. And I was horrified and thrilled at the same time because it sort of meant like, okay, the real pregnancy symptoms are coming on here. Um, the excitement would fade pretty quickly after that because fuck morning sickness. It is, oh God, it's bad. I was so ill and I didn't puke that often. I did a few times, but it was just like this constant nausea, this constant queasiness. Um, and I'm a person who gets like really easily car sick and that kind of thing. So for me, I was like, no, not again. I feel like I'm in the backseat of a car reading a book or playing Game Boy and like I'm gonna open the window to hurl. That's what I felt like day in, day out. Uh, the only things that helped, so I already had a prescription for, I almost said Zoloft, that, that's another story, but I had a prescription for Zofran, um, which is like an anti-nausea medication. And um, I get that for my Crohn's disease anyway. So I already had that and that that seemed to work like okay. Um, I also, I'm not, I'm not like into ginger, but while I was nauseous, I was ready to try anything. So I did um, take some like ch ginger chews and that kind of thing that, the ginger chews actually seemed to help quite a bit. Uh, and then at night I would take like a B12. I think it's a B12. I don't know. It's some, it's like a sleep, aid. oh, Unisom. It's called Unisom and it's like a sleep aid, but it also works really well for nausea. Um, so that's what I would do basically. And I seemed to like get into a good routine of that. And finally it felt like things were starting to work-ish. Um, so this is like a bronzer stick that I just bought and like, I don't know how to do this. You're like, yeah, we get it. Um, so I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna wing it. Please don't judge me. I'm just doing like what I see people do on the internet. <laughs> what a dangerous statement that is to make. If my future child ever says that, I'm doing what people on the internet said to do, uh, I know we're in trouble. <sighs> oh my god, I'm gonna look like such a tool. whatever we're going for it so yada 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 um i was really nauseous and i was really thrilled and also upset at the same time um i got a really strong sense of smell that's another thing that happened um so like with the litter box it was just miserable blaze had to take care of that uh which he's supposed to do anyway when you're pregnant because of toxoplasmosis i've learned a lot of new vocabulary since getting pregnant and so the nausea aside, um, I didn't have too many other symptoms in my first trimester. Oh, it, that's a lie. I was exhausted, like miserably exhausted to a point that I couldn't even comprehend before pregnancy. Like I would sleep 11 hours and wake up and feel like I hadn't slept in days. It was miserable. And I mean, I'm really fortunate that I kind of build my own schedule. Um, so I was very, very lucky on that front, but people who work like classic eight to five, nine to five jobs, Oh my gosh, hats off to you because woof. Oh, and the other thing was that my boobs hurt. My boobs hurt like hell, like a lot. 
uh, that was another really, really big thing. Like I would walk down the stairs, like holding my chest cause it hurt so bad. Um, so those were the big things from the first trimester. And then I think by like week 13 or 14 is when the nausea finally disappeared and the ex exhaustion finally disappeared because I remember waking up and like cleaning the whole house and sitting down and going, Oh my God. Like I just had this sudden burst of energy. I just realized I cleaned the whole house without even thinking. And if you know me, cleaning the house is not something I do regularly. So that was a big deal. And the second trimester kind of was a dream. Um, and I say was because as of yesterday, I'm officially my third trimester, which feels like a big milestone, um, especially after, you know, having, excuse me, acid reflux also. Also there's that. Anyway, if, if it feels like a big milestone to reach uh, the third trimester. And it's still, part of it still, I'll be honest with you, part of it still doesn't feel totally real um, in that I've just had a hard time like connecting, I think, to the pregnancy and to the baby. And don't get me wrong, like I love this this little thing with my whole heart. Um, but there's like kind of a, a hesitation I've noticed. Um, like I've been hesitating to fully to fully commit to the pregnancy or I don't know if com maybe emotionally commit is the right word. Um, meanwhile, I'm just really remembered I'm literally wearing um, this necklace my friend Marilyn gave me that is a G for my firstborn Giovanni. I'm ridiculous. But point being, I've had a little bit of a hard time um, really feeling 100% gung-ho about the pregnancy because there is just a part of me that's still hesitant and pulling back in fear. And I think the farther along I get, the more real it's starting to feel. So being in the third trimester and like realizing the baby is going to be here in like less than 12 weeks, or I don't know, maybe longer, but around there a couple months away is very surreal. And just, ah! So, okay. I guess I'll get to some of the questions that um, I found on Instagram that you guys sent in on Instagram. Okay, everybody is so kind, first of all. Um, let's see, how are you feeling? That's a big question. Um, I got, I covered that a little bit. I am feeling a lot better as far as like physical. Well, I was until a couple of days ago when all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I think it was 4th of July. I was on my feet all day. And that night, I, my, it's like my pelvis or like my, <laughs> my groin. I don't know what it is, but there was just this like horrible, horrible surging pain in my like groinal region. I don't know the right word. Um, I guess it's just like my pelvis. It's just like gen generic pelvic pain, but oh my God, it hurts. And it's hard to walk. Um, you should picture me again, trying to carry that floor length mirror up the stairs. I mean, it's a struggle. So that's really been causing issues. Um, the other physical issue I've been having is restless leg syndrome hashtag RLS. I've had that for a long time, um, just in life, but just being pregnant and being exhausted and having this like horrible RLS, which if you don't know what it is, it's basically where your legs, well, like while you're right about to fall asleep, your legs just <laughs> are like, no, you can't do that. It, it's like this uncontrollable urge you feel to like move them or itch them or, and they, they like burn and hurt if you don't move them. Um, and mine get really hot. And it's so hard to explain without, but once you have it, like you'll know what it is. Um, and so that's been kind of a struggle. The only thing I found that has really, really worked is putting icy hot all over my feet and legs. And I mean, it didn't make my bedding smell great, but it really worked. So if that's something where you're like at your wits end, um, highly recommend trying like a Bengay or an icy hot or something. Asper cream, I think is the other one. Uh, that seemed to actually do wonders for me, but I'm just so glad that the nausea is um, subsiding. Oh, so about my Crohn's, um, that I've been really fortunate, again, knock on wood, I've been really fortunate that that has not flared. That was something I was always really nervous about, but I guess what I've learned is that a lot of people who get pregnant and have Crohn's, their symptoms like completely go away or at least diminish during pregnancy and they, they think it's something to do with the hormones, um, that maybe your hormones are like preventing you from having that I don't know, autoimmune reaction. I'm totally, not totally sure, but um, basically I've been doing great. And uh, you know, according to my doctor, Remicade, which is my infusion that I get every eight weeks um, is perfectly safe. I've been taking it for 11 years now. So like I was not about to give that up. 
And it honestly, the way my doctor put it, which I think is smart, is it's better to be taking the medication and staying stable and healthy than to go off the medication and go into a terrible flare while pregnant. Like that's not gonna be good for the baby either. Um, so that kind of helped me make that decision. The only other thing that I've been like actually struggling quite a bit with um, mentally is mental stuff. I talk pretty openly, you know, on social media and on the podcast about my depression and anxiety, um, which originally was like anxiety all the way. And then over the years, I realized that depression and anxiety were like very closely linked to my case. Um, and so, you know, 2020 was obviously a lot for all of us. But um, in December, I started taking, so I'd been on Wellbutrin and in December, I started taking um, Lexapro on the recommendation of my psychiatrist because she was saying, you know, Wellbutrin has a reputation for making your anxiety worsen while it also alleviates depression. And that combo, within a few weeks, I realized it, this, it was a miracle. Like it had been, it worked so, so well. Um, and I realized my just like day-to-day -day anxiety and like heightened state of like arousal and fear and whatever had gone down significantly. Um, and so that was huge for me. But then getting pregnant, you know, there's just so much added fear to like basically everything you do. And so I stayed on my medications. That was a choice I made. And I've gotten, I mean, I haven't really gotten it. I guess I've put it on myself, just a lot of guilt like just a lot of fear that I'm, um, I don't know, harming the baby or I'm not making my body the safest environment for the baby. But I just knew that if I went off of um, my meds, like things were not gonna go well. Sorry, my friend, every time I do my eyebrows, my friend Renee calls me Groucho Marx. <laughs> Help. I stayed on my meds and it was a scary decision, but I just, I knew I couldn't go off it without like <laughs> wreaking havoc on my brain and my body and my emotions. So. I stayed on it and you know online people you read the forums at least i do not a great idea ever really <laughs> to read forums um but i find myself one of those people who's just like digging through forums um thinking somebody has the answer uh and there's a lot of kind of shaming um for basically everything anybody does during pregnancy or parenthood but um you know especially with the medications i have kept that really on the dl and I guess not anymore, here it is. But you guys know how important, you know, talking about mental health is and how much it, you know, has impacted my day-to-day -day life and just my career and everything. So, you know, pregnancy is no different. It doesn't just erase, you know, a need for medication, even if people do pressure you to go off it. So that's something that I've had mixed feelings about, um, but here I am, you know, I'm okay. Like, I feel like, I've had a lot of pretty steep, steep anxiety during pregnancy, you know, which is understandable, I guess. But I feel like it would have been so much worse without the meds, so I'm, you know, very thankful for them. What does it feel like when the baby moves? Okay, oh, and somebody else asked, I'm 18 weeks and can't feel baby move yet. Do you feel yours move? So that's a great question. And um, to the person at 18 weeks, I also hadn't felt the baby move at 18 weeks. And I found out later that I have, <laughs> it's very anxiety inducing, so I get it. It's like very, very scary. Um, but I found out later that I have an anterior placenta, which is basically like, it's nothing bad, but it's, it's pretty common, but it's basically where the placenta attaches to the front of your belly. Um, and so it can be harder at the, be in the beginning to feel the kicks because there's kind of an extra layer of padding there. And so that was something that scared me at first, but ultimately it happened. Don't worry. You'll feel it. Like I now am what, 28 weeks and all day long. It's like, like poking. Um, it's hard to explain what it feels like. I mean, now I can put my hand on it and like actually feel like kicking. And it's freaky, don't get me wrong, it's freaky. But it's also really reassuring, you know, cause it's sort of like, okay, there you are, just hanging out in there. Let's see what else. Ooh, cravings, that's fun. So I really thought, like I already have a really weird taste in food. I like weird shit like anchovies and like pickled herring. I mean, I like just strange food in general. Um, so I thought I was gonna have like some really wild uh, cravings, but honestly, they haven't been that bizarre. I have cravings, don't get me wrong, but they're not, you know, peanut butter plus pickle. That's not what's happening. It's more, <laughs> so my cravings work like this. I will be watching TV. Uh, I don't know, I'll be watching something completely not food related, like 
Handmaid's Tale <laughs> with Blaze. And somebody on the show will either mention a hamburger or I don't know. It's, it's basically like anything I see in the media, <laughs> which sounds so weird, or read about or hear somebody mention suddenly like sticks in my brain. And I cannot stop thinking about it until I consume it. So the other night we were watching a show on Apple TV. I think it's called Trying. It's pretty good. Um, and they mentioned milkshakes, I think. I don't even know if I'm getting this right, but somebody mentioned a milkshake, okay? And it was like this sudden, like I couldn't think about any, I couldn't even watch the show anymore without just desperately needing a milkshake. And poor Blaze, I mean, he's been so good, but at first I told him like, no, it's not a big deal, but I think he knew I was not gonna let it go until I got a milkshake. So he drove to UDF for me, which is like an ice cream shop around here in Cincinnati, and got me peanut butter chocolate chip milkshake. And then I was good. Like, I've been fine since then. I'm now, now the more I talk about it, the more I really, 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 really need another milkshake. But point being, my cravings are basically anytime. I mean, even like fruit or vegetables. Like someone was cooking broccoli on YouTube the other day and I was like, I need to order broccoli now. Like what? Um, but I have been craving fruit. That's another big one, like watermelon, berries. And I'm not usually a huge fruit person. So that's kind of exciting because <laughs> at least it's something healthy, right? And I haven't been really strict about my food intake only because I have a pretty storied past with disordered eating. And um, I'm not gonna get too much into that. I know that's hard for people to like hear about and talk about, but basically that's been another like troubling factor and part of my anxiety. Um, and I think depression even going through pregnancy, like dealing with the remnants of that that I thought were gone, but like never really are, I guess. And then coping with like the constant um, discussion of weight gain uh, during pregnancy and the constant like, you know, apps and doctors and people asking how much you weight you gain and whether you're gaining a healthy amount or an unhealthy amount or is it bad for the baby if you're gaining too much weight. So it's that's been like a huge anxiety point for me. Um, so I've been just kind of um, intuitively eating like I have been for the past couple years. Uh, and that's been doing fine. I mean, the doctor says I'm doing fine, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. I try not to linger on the weight too much because I know how dangerous that can get when I get fixated. But that aside, cravings have been relatively manageable. Okay, sex of the baby, great question. Um, that's another thing. I mean, God, I feel like everything I'm bringing up is just like another point of anxiety. I'm sorry, I know that this is becoming just kind of like a dump <laughs> uh, on you, but Pregnancy, oh, I love this palette, by the way. It's so dirty, I'm sorry, but it's the Raw Beauty Christy ColourPop. Um, like her little like foresty palette. I love it so much. It's called At Forest Sight. Um, and it has, it's so dirty. I don't even wanna show you, but it has, I'll just do it really quickly <laughs> so you can't see the mess. Um, it has all these beautiful kind of like woodsy colors, which is just my jam. Full disclosure, I like rarely ever wear eye, uh, eyeshadow, so I, I like don't really know what I'm doing. Um, you're gonna see that in about five seconds, but this is just for fun, let's try it. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, by the way, pregnancy brain is a real thing. A real, real, real thing. Oh right, sex with the baby. Um, so that is another thing that's been giving me, <laughs> that was giving me a lot of anxiety at the beginning because um, you know, I've spent a couple years now really learning and educating myself on the difference between gender and sex and, you know, the importance of pronouns and the importance of people owning their own pronouns rather than being assigned them. And so that's something that I've been struggling with as far as like how to approach this with a baby. Um, and so Blaze and I have talked about it quite a bit and it's something we actually talked about before I ever even got pregnant. You know, how would we approach um, the gender sex thing with the baby. And um, I'm just, I just feel really lucky because he's, you know, just as concerned and just as invested in that issue um, as I am. Sometimes even more so, I think. Like he, he is sometimes a step ahead of me in that regard. What we've decided, um, we did find out the sex of the baby. Um, and just to clarify, you know, sex is the biological difference between quote male versus quote female. Uh, versus gender, which is sort of a construct um, that has been assigned to people with certain body parts, certain organs. Uh, so the sex of the baby, we did find out, and we wanted to find out 
Um, and we are going to, I've actually like my poor therapist has dealt with all of this shit with me, but she helped me talk through it a lot. And she's also like extremely, you know, progressive and understanding of these issues. And, um, she knew kind of where my anxiety was coming from. And so she really helped me like come up with kind of an approach to this, which is that we found out the sex of the baby and we're going to use the, um, correlating pronouns. And then as the baby, you know, grows, we're, I mean, even without all that being a factor, like I'm not a very like girly versus boy type person. Like I was never gonna be like sharks are for boys and girls like princesses. Like, you know, I was just never that kind of person anyway. Um, so, you know, the nursery and everything is already gender neutral. Uh, and for clothes, I just buy what I think is cute. Um, same with like toys and that kind of thing. I'm really not in interested in the whole like boy versus girl thing when shopping. Plus then you get like double the options. Just saying. So we did find out and, and I mean the, mo the main thing that I think we wanted to find out, the main reason we wanted to find out, at least for me, was the name because we were kind of leaning towards a certain name and they were different depending on, you know, whether, um, as much as I just said, you know, gender neutral, everything, there's a certain name that I, you know, envisioned for a girl and a certain name that I envisioned for a boy. Um, and they're both like pretty similar, actually, they're both pretty similar and they're both pretty neutral. Like, I feel like ultimately if the, the baby or the, the child decides, you know, I'm not comfortable with that, I'd like to nickname it or switch it or whatever, that's totally fine. And I think that's kind of how we're approaching this is, you know, we're gonna give the baby a name, give the baby the pronouns that kind of correlate with what we've been told as the sex. Um, and then as the baby grows older, if they feel that their, you know, identity leans a different way or that they aren't comfortable with the kind of identity that they've been quote unquote assigned, um, then that's totally fine. And that's something we'll address later on down the road. You know, I have plenty of friends who, who weren't comfortable with the pronouns they were assigned at birth um, and have changed them. And I just think that's a really brave and awesome move. And so I definitely plan on being a parent who's completely understanding and open to that. Um, obviously that's a bigger discussion down the road if that even happens, but, um, just to clarify, we do know the sex. I'm not going to say it yet because I just don't know. I haven't, we haven't decided whether to reveal that yet or how to approach it. And again, I don't want to make a big deal out of it because I really don't think, I just think we put too much emphasis on gender in general in the world. Um, sorry, now this is becoming like a, a rant on like political values and blah, blah, blah. But basically my point is, what is my point? Basically my point is everything, you know, that we assign to the baby as far as like names and gender, yada, yada, that's all going to be, you know, with a grain of salt as far as like until they're old enough to feel comfortable or uncomfortable or decide themselves, then, you know, we're going to go with that. Um, and I think we've both come to feel like that's the best way to move forward. And like, we were never going to have a gender reveal party. Like, that's just so not, I mean, well, I would love to set an entire forest on fire and accidentally burn down a building. We just weren't, we just didn't feel like a gender reveal party was kind of our thing. Uh, the last thing we want is for our child to grow up someday, identify differently and look back and just see all the like, quote unquote, pink or blue, you know, decorations and bows. And, you know, listen, don't get me wrong. I love like cute frilly things. I love like sweet animal, dinosaur, prince, whatever. But I just feel like there's too much emphasis on boxing a baby into that kind of gender role. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going, I'm getting really ahead of myself. It doesn't matter. But that being said, we do have the sex of the baby. We do have the name and it's really special to us. And I'm very, very excited. And I don't want to announce the name until they're born because I, I don't know. I just, I'm very influenced by other people's opinions. So the last thing I need is for, um, somebody to like comment something rude or like oh that reminds me of this character or person and then I just like can't get that out of my head um because I'm very easily influenced by other people as sad as that is um something I'm trying to work on especially if I'm like putting all this shit on the internet like pregnancy and motherhood and all that um it's gonna be kind of tough but sorry that was like a really long rant and like that's what I ended up doing to my eye during all of it sorry Okay, let's see what else. How do you think Geo will react to the baby? All right, I'd love to know what your guys' experiences have been with a dog and a baby and cats and a baby because like, 
Gio doesn't, Gio is like scared of children. He really is. Like he's, this morning we were out for a walk and a sweet little girl asked if she could pet Gio. And I was like, I'm really sorry. He's, you know, scared of kids. And she kind of approached him and Gio, I could tell was ready to like lunge. Like he's not going to bite anybody, but he just gets really defensive around kids. And I don't know if it's because they're like smaller. I'm, I'm not really sure, but he's like scared of children and he's never been around a baby. And so I'm a little bit nervous. Like, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to react. Like, I don't think he's going to, I think it'll be fine since the baby's going to be like raised with us. I don't think he's going to like freak out every time he sees the kid. Um, but I'm a little worried that like, maybe he'll be on edge or I don't know. I guess worried isn't the right word. Like, I'm not worried about it overall. I just am very curious to see how it will go. And then for the cats, you know, Juniper is very hands-off and he is just like not interested in other people. Um, so I don't think he will be, I think he might like give it a side eye and that's it. Um, but Mooney, our new little one, he's very cuddly. And the black cat you saw in the beginning, he just loves to be like up in everyone's grill. He's very sweet. He's he reminds me of one of the, he's a dumpster cat, but he was sort of raised by Geo. So like he was found behind a dumpster with no, <laughs> next to a bar fittingly, with no, you know, parents in sight, no mama cat with him, no siblings. And so when we brought him home at three months, he was sort of like raised by Geo and Juniper. And since Juniper's so hands off, like Geo, I think was the more, <laughs> was the more influential um, character. And so I just, I feel a little bit like Junie or Mooney's going to be, Moonshine's going to be the more um, involved cat with the baby. And part of me is like, oh God, I hope he doesn't like sit on the baby's head. Like, I don't know. He does that to me. Like, I don't, I don't think he's going to like smother the baby, but you know, there's just a lot of anxiety. So um, we're just going to keep an eye on it, but I have no idea. Like, how did you guys, can you guys let me know what you did with you know, your, your pets and your baby, like when you brought the baby home. Um, I just don't really know how it's going to go. And they've all been the babies for so long that I'm a little bit afraid they're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? What else? Oh my gosh. I love this question. So somebody says, what questions slash assumptions are you tired of getting? I just had a baby two months ago. Okay. So this is a big one. And this was something I was like really afraid of, you know, like at least having strangers kind of react to the pregnancy and honestly i've been surprised i guess i've i'm pretty good at covering up like i've always worn xxl clothes anyway like very baggy clothes um so i've al already been pretty used to um covering up hashtag body image issues but um so people don't necessarily realize i'm pregnant right away it's gonna be harder and harder to hide that as we go forward and with covid i'm like not seeing people that often at least strangers but it there is a new element to it as far as being on the internet, because obviously that opens you up to a whole new world of um, strangers and people who kind of have opinions. And honestly, people have been lovely. Like I just feel so lucky that the people who follow me and the people who follow the podcast are so just kind and understanding and open-minded. Um, and that is how I've been able to just learn and grow so much over the last couple of years, just like learning from you guys. Um, so essentially the only things that really have bothered me are like, I mean, there were a couple things like I make it a habit to avoid Reddit, um, the subreddits for both my podcasts for obvious reasons, because that tends to be where most of the like kind of more harsh conversations happen. Um, and obviously those need to happen. You know, I'm not saying I don't respect um, that people have a place for that. I, I find that, you know, fully important. But I have made the mistake a few times of kind of peeking in. Uh, don't recommend if there's a subreddit where people kind of discuss you. I wouldn't recommend checking it out if you are an anxious person like some of us. Oh, F, I forgot my eyeliner. No. Okay. Well, I have the liquid liner. I'll just use that. This is a mess. So anyway, there was one thread that kind of got to me and like, it's again, it's my fault that I let it get to me. I should have known better, but I looked at it and it was basically people discussing whether or not I was kind of prepared for pregnancy. And it just felt very invasive. And I don't think anybody meant anything 
you know, cruel by it by any means. It was more of a discussion of like, how are they going to pull off the live tour next year? Um, if you guys were involved in this whole thing on Reddit, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and you know, maybe I did overreact. I'm not really sure. I kind of dipped out afterward, but um, people were discussing, you know, like, how are they going to pull off the tour? Is Christine going to, like, mail her breast milk? I mean, it just felt a little invasive. And yet, yeah, well, you know, on the one hand, I do recognize I'm putting myself out there and, like, opening myself up to critique. Like, I fully understand that. Um, it, it was a little bit, like, jarring to see people discussing my breast milk on the internet. Um, and there were a lot of questions, you know, kind of pertaining to she, she doesn't know what she's getting herself into. Like, she doesn't realize how hard it's going to be. Like, poor thing. She's going to be so shocked. And while, like, obviously nobody can understand parenthood until they experience it, I get that. Um, I'm not as naive as maybe I come across. Um, and I think part of my sort of shtick or brand is that I'm kind of like, la la la. Um, I'm just wine drunk, you know. Not now, obviously. I think people sometimes take what they hear on the podcast, like those brief little interludes, and then kind of expand that to my whole persona. Um, and it's not necessarily true. And while like, obviously that persona is me, you know, I'm not like a different person on the show or anything. Um, there's just an element that's more, how do I put this? More nuanced outside of the podcast. And I guess that's partially why I wanted to do something like this where I can, you know, openly talk about those things just to people who want to hear it. So they don't have to sit through it just to get to, you know, the newest installment of Jeffrey Dahmer on the podcast or whatever. Um, so that I have like a separate place for anybody who has questions or thoughts. Um, but anyway, those kind of comments threw me off. And then I got a little bit upset mostly because I, ever since I got pregnant, I've had this just like really deep fear of keeping my career going um, and being a parent. And it's something that I think is instilled um, massively in women or those who identify as women from a young age that, you know, being a parent and having a full-time career are not necessarily possible or are not easy um, and or maybe not the right thing to do. And my career is like the most important thing to me. Um, and I'm also lucky again with Blaze who um, also has his own career, but like is fully understanding that mine is just as important as his. He's, that's never been a question. I mean, he's moved everywhere with me for my jobs. Like he's the one who's had to compromise a lot. Um, and you know, we both try to be as equal and fair as possible. But so, you know, for, for the upcoming, preg for the upcoming baby, nobody's asking him like, how are you gonna be able to pull off being a parent and having a baby at the same time. And yet here I am getting all these questions about, and the thing is I work from home, you know, I build my own schedule. I work with my best friend and my brother. I'm really, really extremely fortunate in that because that opens up so many possibilities for me as far as being able to, you know, juggle parenting and working and keeping that balance in check. So I, I feel like I'm on just already such a fortunate level. When my mom raised me, she was a single mom and she was getting her PhD. You know, we didn't have much money um, and it was really, really tough. And watching her do that, you know, it is not lost on me how hard it is to parent. And I don't think I'm going into this with the naive attitude of, oh, psh, I'll figure it out. You know, I spend pretty much every day like in a deep well of anxiety trying to make sure that I am prepared and make sure all my bases are covered. I'm not letting anyone down career-wise. I'm not letting anyone down family-wise. Um, and so getting those comments that are kind of flippant and saying, oh, she has no idea what she's getting into. Um, what is she gonna mail her breast milk across the country when she's on tour? Like it, it just sometimes gets to me. But again, that's my fault for even looking. And like, you know, people are right to have those questions. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, maybe I should have gotten an actual mirror. Oh God, Blaze is gonna come home from this trip he's on this weekend and be like, what is going, like, our mirror is missing? Okay, I have to go like, I don't know, this is always my favorite part to watch on YouTube, but like, I don't have an actual mirror here, so I'm a little worried I'm not gonna do a good job. I mean, I'm basically doing this by feel, so it could end up very poorly, and I apologize in advance. Oh, fuck. 
Okay, I have no idea what I just did. I need to go look in an actual mirror. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Ow, 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 my pelvis. Oh my God. I feel like I'm 100. Okay, so that went terribly. Just don't look too closely, okay? I'm actually usually very proud of how I do my liquid eyeliner and this is not an uh, adequate example of that. So I, I'm ashamed, okay? But I didn't bring, like an idiot, I didn't bring q-tips or anything to fix it so we're just gonna have to roll with it um maybe if i keep doing these i'll get better probably not just because like i ended up smearing shit all over my face i mean this is a mess okay essentially my rant was just all culminating in there's a lot of kind of anxiety about continuing my career while raising a child and I don't want people to think, I think it's gonna be easy. Trust me, I don't. And trust me, everyone reminds me every single day of that fact. It's a little frustrating that Blaze doesn't get that same kind of critique, um, but fortunately, you know, my family nor Blaze ever put that pressure on me. It's mostly people on the internet um, and some people in my life who I love dearly, but maybe have not necessarily thought through what they're saying before they say it. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, once the baby comes and we kind of settle into a routine that people realize like, I'm here for the long haul. I'm not leaving my job behind. This is all I care about in life, right? Like, obviously I'm gonna love my baby to the ends of the earth. I got attached to a mummified lemon for God's sake, but my career is like the only thing that I live for right now. So I'm not gonna dispose of it just because things get hard or there's an added element of work in my life, um, even if it is a huge added element of work and emotional labor. Does that make sense? I don't know. Again, my brain is fried. I just feel like my brain is fried. Okay, a few, que a few questions are about kind of like the witchier aspects, um, which is something that I am trying to lean into and I, I would love guidance. Like if you all know how to kind of guide me on this, that would be amazing. Um, but essentially, you know, I am a semi-witchy person. Like, I i mean, not to show off my crystal collection. No, I'm just kidding. But I am very, you know, spiritual. And um, I grew up Catholic, have kind of turned away from that and have become more, um, you know, I mean, I moved to LA. What did you expect? I became pretty, like, spiritual. But in all seriousness, like, I'm very, you know, I, I really believe in the power of intention. Um, I believe in the spiritual world. My mom, for example, has a PhD in German Jewish exile literature, but then on the other hand, she has a master's in Reiki as well. So this is kind of the environment I've been brought up in, like it's kind of a mix. Um, I like to think it's a healthy mix of both, um, kind of an analytical side and then a more spiritual, open-minded side. So, you know, I've been trying to be close with that spiritual side and I had to work through a lot of things with the miscarriages um, and I, you know, spoke with a kind of spiritual healer during that time who really helped walk me through like the process of letting go and it was very emotional um, and it, that actually took place like a month before I found out I was pregnant again and it did feel like it kind of cleared sort of a, an emotional path for me to be able to move on from that chapter of my life and into kind of a new, happier, more um, fulfilling chapter. Um, and so, you know, I've been trying to focus on intentions and meditation and that kind of thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. Like, I feel like I do so many different things every day and I have to focus on so many different things work-wise, uh, now pregnancy-wise and otherwise. And so spiritual stuff tends to fall on the back burner and I really wish it wouldn't. I wish it was something I could, you know, focus on. I've always wanted to, I, you know, I have a, um, I have a couple certifications in Reiki, but then I also have like a full certification in Akashic record reading. And um, that's something that I love to do in LA. And, you know, let me know if you guys want a video on that too. I talk, a, I've talked a little bit about like my experience with lucid dreaming and I plan on making a video about that as well. Um, but I feel like a little out of my element and I feel sometimes like, again, like a fraud because while I do have these crystals and, you know, I feel a little bit sometimes like I'm just that LA 
basic bitch who, you know, collects crystals and oracle cards and just like fucks around. But I don't want to be that person. I really, um, hi Gio. I want to be more in tune with my spiritual side. I want to raise my kid in a way that sort of embraces that spiritual side. And, um, I mean, I have a podcast about ghosts. Like, what do you expect? Um, and as Blaze is a very like analytical person, um, you know, we kind of balance each other out in that way where I tend to be the more, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say open-minded. He's an extremely open-minded person, I guess, open-minded to kind of the paranormal or the supernatural or kind of the witchy spiritual side of things. And he was raised of Catholic, he was raised Catholic as well. And I think we're both maybe a little jaded from that experience as my Catholic school friends, survivors, as I like to say, probably know that can really have an impact on your life. But so I'm trying to get back in touch with my spiritual side. And now that I live in like Kentucky, you know, it's harder to make that happen than when I was living in LA and had so many different resources at my disposal. Like I could literally just sign up for my next Reiki level course and take it that weekend and here it's harder. Um, so if anybody has any resources, like whether that's online, for example, I've been taking a birthing course um, with the Peaceful Birth Company and Katie Iengo reached out to me. She's teaching this course and it is so eye-opening and has been just really great for both Blaze and me to take together and kind of appreciate like the aspects of birth that are not how you see it, you know, in the traditional sense uh, in Hollywood, baby, where everyone's like screaming bloody murder and your water breaks and then the baby falls out in the taxi, you know, it's just like a n different kind of more calm and spiritual approach to birth. And she provides a lot of um, uh, like hypnosis sessions. It's like a hypnobirthing course. So uh, hypnosis sessions, meditations, uh, and things that have kind of been created to help you connect to your baby, connect to the birthing experience, uh, and prepare you for a more, you know, relaxed and less terrifying birth. Um, since we're often made to feel like birth is meant to be this like horrifyingly terrifying, painful experience. So that's been like very eye opening for me. Um, and I'd love to just like hear more, you know, thoughts, hear other people's thoughts and any resources you all have. Um, I've been having some really wild dreams. And I've been writing them down and some of them do feel much more important. Like I've been, you know, I've had a couple dreams about my grandmother who passed last year, um, who I have a very strange, my grandma and grandfather on my dad's side, we were never close in life. And it was almost like when they passed, there was this bizarre shift. Sorry, I like, I don't know. <laughs> It's so strange because like in life, I just could never connect with them and like I was quite frankly scared of them and they went through a lot. I mean, you know, they lived in Germany and Austria um, throughout World War II. Um, so that aside, it, it was sort of like when they passed away, there was this like sudden almost connection with their soul. Okay, anyone who's watching this who's new is like, what is up? What is she smoking? I mean, this pregnant lady is Looney Tunes, which yeah, like fair. Hopefully this isn't like shocking to people who know me pretty well by now, but um, I feel like there was this sort of like spiritual connection that suddenly formed um, that felt really special, especially because I didn't know them well in life and they were so far away being across the ocean. But throughout the years I've had dreams about my grandfather um, that I've felt on a very deep level that I felt were really more than dreams where we, you know, connected. Once my grandmother passed, I actually knew she died the moment she died, um, which, you know, you hear a lot. It's kind of a cliche, like ghost story. Like I had a dream, she passed and then, you know, I woke up and that's kind of what happened. Um, and that was pretty cha like as life changing for me because it was very solidifying that like, okay, maybe all this stuff isn't like cuckoo bananas. Like people sometimes try to make you believe. Um, and also Blaze was witness to that and like helped me through that. And I think that also kind of helped him understand where I was coming from, but like, this isn't just like a f all fun and games. Like I really do believe there's, you know, that we have connections to the other side. Um, so anyway, what am I talking about? When my grandmother passed, I suddenly started having those same like dreams about her. And I had one dream pretty early on where I told her I was pregnant and 
in the dream, I knew it was a dream and I knew she was really there. Like I knew, I knew I was not awake. I knew that this was either a dream or I was actually speaking to her, but I told her I was pregnant and she told me she knew that I was pregnant. Um, and that was kind of the end of it, but it was like very powerful. Um, and that only happened with this most recent pregnancy. So those are the kind of things I want to kind of really ex em embrace and enjoy and experience and kind of get close to as I move forward um, because I want to, I don't know, I want to raise my baby in a very open-minded, like understanding uh, environment. I don't want to shut them off from experiences or things that they, you know, feel just because they're not like normal or what have you. Also, like, this is selfish, but I would love to find out if my baby had, like, a past life experience. I just think those stories are so interesting. But, um, anyway, all that aside, I just, if you guys know of any resources or, like, courses or places I can just learn more about connecting with, I don't know, using crystals, using can, I, anything witchy, like, I would, I would love that, um, I know that's a broad request, but otherwise, you know, if I do find anything or have more experiences, I will definitely keep you in the loop. Um, but that's about it. I mean, this is a very, again, <laughs> slipshod, haphazard, as my mother says, half hazardly done makeup routine. Um, I also like haven't washed my hair in three days, so it's filled with dry shampoo. So as always, I'm a classy bitch. Also, if there's anything I forget to put in the, um, in the description that I, like, said I would, which I'm entirely positive is going to happen, um, just let me know so I can update it. And then also, oh, I got this in my FabFitFun. I just, like, I fucking love FabFitFun. You guys know that already, but perma could drink. <laughs> but I got this, like, watermelon setting spray from Ciate. Is that how you say it? Ciate? Ciate? Pff, hell if I know. Um, but it smells wonderful and it's like very, I don't know, refreshing. <laughs> so that's that. I don't have a mirror, so I don't know what the hell I just did, but um, hopefully I don't look like, <laughs> like I just fell in a bucket of paint. It's entirely possible. Um, and if it looks terrible, like don't let me know because I already know, like I'm at one step ahead of you there. Maybe I'll watch some more actual makeup videos before I do my next one. But thank you everybody for, you know, submitting questions. Um, right now I'm doing like close friends questions uh, for people who are in the And That's Why You Drink Patreon group. But obviously if you have a question, feel free to leave it in a comment below. If you're like, why are you doing this? Like, I just want to hear scary stories. I mean, that's fine. I don't know. What do you guys want to hear? I just love to talk to you. And I feel like I would love to just give you all what you want. So let me know if you have any other pregnancy questions. I could do a part two or any other, you know, burning questions you have. Um, otherwise, oh, I would love to show you guys the nursery at some point. It's not done yet. But again, like I said, it's pretty gender neutral. So it's not like a reveal, like a gender reveal or anything. But um I would love to show you that if anyone's even remotely interested. If not, like, I get it. All right, I love you all. Thank you for sitting here and watching me self-deprecate myself over makeup. Uh, I don't think any of that is English, but you know, it's not my first language. All right, I love you all so much. Let me know what you think, what you wanna hear. Uh, I'm here for you and I am so proud that you're here and with me and hanging out and I love you so much. Okay, bye. <laughs>